anyone ever tell you that this country isn't great? That somehow we need to make it great again? Because this right now is the greatest country on earth. This is your president. In the past 10 years, I have fooled all of you into believing the socialist ideology of everyone is equal. How? By making everyone believe the lie and having destroyed our nation's sovereignty. Through communism, we will all be a unified global government of acceptance by making everyone have the same thing. You won't be an American. You, you won't be a citizen Somebody anymore. Else made that happen. You will be the same as your dog, your neighbors in Mexico. If all have nothing, then all will be equal. That is the purpose of socialism. You are nothing unless the government tells you who or what you are. Don't pretend you don't know what I've been doing. I brainwashed you through high-definition television. You are truly the walking dead. If I told you to give up your freedoms, you would. But it's already happened, so I don't need to keep convincing you. <laughs> you all are vegetables now anyway. Oh, by the way, if you can't see that I'm the Antichrist, then there's no reason anymore to tell you what must be done next, because you'll be hunted down with the Christians and exterminated for not believing me, not accepting who I am. I'm your Messiah, your Imam Mahdi. April 23rd, 2018, I told the world, but it wasn't time yet to bring out who I am, so the conspiracy must continue against Trump until that is accomplished. The rapture must happen first. Remember always that I made narcotics legal. I made every kind accessible. I made this addicted nation a reality through suicide, overdoses, you name it. I did that. Ever wonder how I control everything you see and hear? I own the media. I have since I took over in 2009. I laugh when I see Republicans standing next to each other without a word. They can't. I control what they see, what they hear. Want truth, facts, forget it. I am your whole world now. If life means anything today, it won't under the global system I've initiated since I became president in 2009. My legions accept whatever I tell them to do. You will too, or you'll be hunted down with the rest and exterminated. It's as simple as that. Accept and obey, or resist and die. I am your hope for tomorrow. I am your president. There is only one outcome. World domination. Either you'll accept me or be taken out. It's time to take a stand for one or the other. Me or freedom and liberty. Remember Adolf Hitler, freedom is a lie. Enslavement is acceptance. We will decriminalize marijuana and we, you, will, we will expunge the records of those who have Thank been you, convicted Harris. of marijuana. This is Thank a you, time Senator for Harris. leadership on a tragic, tragic issue Senator Harris, of unarmed black up. people in America. Who Thank have you, been Senator killed. Harris. I am Patrick McGugan, John Drake. But you also know me as number six. Who was I, really? I represented you, the private citizen. It was symbolism of the socialist world order we see today. You didn't get it, did you? Now we all are facing this reality, that all are controlled by the New World Order. We should never allow the government to decide what is acceptable speech and what is unacceptable speech. Um, we, should, we should penalize behaviors, not opinions, and not speech. 
uh, if you start trying to regulate speech, start trying to regulate uh, thoughts, start trying to regulate beliefs rather than behaviors, uh, there's no way that you're not going to abridge the constitutional rights of millions of Americans. We'll continue with as the world turns following station identification. Follow Todd and Link. From CBS News in New York. This report just in. Alvin the Chipmunk has been arrested today at EMI Studios in Hollywood on attempted murder charges. According to the Associated Press, he branded a .22 caliber pistol and shot Dave Seville at close range during a recording session for their upcoming record release. Witnesses say Alvin was despondent and yelled, quote, I've had it with Dave and his constant demands on me, Simon, and Theodore for the overworking he has put us through to make the release. He gets all the money and we get all the sleepless hours, unquote. Last reports say Mr. Seville is in surgery at Hollywood Memorial Hospital. We'll break in with any updates. For CBS News, I'm Walter Cronkite. We now return to normal programming. We'll be back in uh, 10 seconds to allow all our stations to identify themselves and to join the network. We'll be back in uh, 10 seconds to allow all our stations to identify themselves and to join the network. Package dry starch that works this way. Niagara's deep, penetrating action gives long-lasting beauty to sheets.
curtains, even slip covers. See how fresh and lightly smooth, never stiff or boarding. So for the two most convenient ways to starch, get instant Niagara for washer starching, Niagara spray starch for spray starching. So effective, they've earned the good housekeeping seal. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at um, the local hospital in Hollywood. We're here. Um, it's approximately uh, 11.30 in the evening, and the last reports we have from the doctors who are operating on Dave Seville is that his condition has improved. He is no longer near death. They say that they've been able to stabilize all of his vital signs. Apparently, the bullets struck not in the heart or near it, but around it. Apparently, Alvin must have been shooting the gunshots in that general direction, but it primarily got other vital organs. It's definitely, they say, it's hit his stomach. One of his kidneys was hit, and uh, they say there is some spinal damage, but they don't think that it would be uh, severe enough that he wouldn't walk again. Uh, I've asked the doctor if whether or not Dave might be conscious for us to talk to him at a later date or time tonight, and they are saying possibly he may come out of surgery. Oh, uh, here comes the doctor. Just a moment. Doctor, uh, how is, um, how is Dave? Is, is he going to make it? Yes, his bottom, his bottom signs are very good. We, we have very high hopes that Dave will make a full recovery. I've got to get back in. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard it live. Uh, his doctors are saying that apparently Dave isn't severely injured to the point that it was a life-threatening event. He has quite a long ways to go, we know, but this is very encouraging news to anyone who is fans of the Alvin and the Chipmunks group that their band leader, Dave Seville, is apparently going to make a full recovery. If and when the opportunity arises, uh, Walter, we will come back here live and try to get an interview with, uh, with Dave if and when he comes out of surgery and he's able to talk with us. We're not going to push him on this because we know how seriously in injured and wounded he was from these gunshots. But for now, I'm going to take it back to New York and to Walter Cronkite. Uh, this is David Carter for CBS News. This is David Carter for WCBS, uh, and we're in Hollywood, California at the present time to um, do an interview today with Dave Seville. He's the band leader of the Alvin and the Chipmunks, who in the past three to four days was severely injured, if not potentially almost shot to death by Alvin during one of the recording sessions during Christmas Day in uh, the EMI studios. When this story broke, we found out that the studio recording engineer had accidentally continued recording the segments without shutting the recorder off, and we were able to get those fatal moments when Alvin had the confrontation with Dave and shot him. We've been told now by the doctors that he is well enough to do uh, an interview with us. To be understood, he is probably not going to be able to answer too many questions, but they're saying that he is conscious, and he has been uh, willing now to have a brief interview with, with us, with CBS, and uh, we're going in to talk with, uh, with Dave at this present time. So please stand by. We will uh, go inside with the equipment and... Uh, We'll be right back with you again. Dave, uh, my name is David Carter. I work for CBS News uh, out of New York uh, for WCBS. We're really, really sorry to hear that this tragedy has happened to you, of all people, because whenever we hear you on these records, you and Alvin and uh, Simon and Theodore all seem to be so happy. 
And I know that it's a part of your job to have these uh, outbursts, you know, towards Alvin because it makes it funnier. But we never knew that behind the scenes there was really this hatred that was building up between you and Alvin. What what is your opinion, uh, Dave, as to why would uh, why would Alvin do something like this? What what, what was your opinions about that? Well, I I can't say. I'm I'm just trying as hard as I can right now to make this this interview. It, it really hurts, you know, in my chest area. But I can tell you honestly, I cannot believe Alvin would do this to me. It doesn't make sense to think about it. We were having such a good time doing the recording, and then he started up about this this totally unexpected argument about us not getting along, and the, the recording wasn't going the way he hoped it would, and he wasn't getting to, to say the things he wanted to in the record, and you know, we were already behind schedule on the recording anyway, and I kept saying to him, look, Alvin, there's nothing else I can do. I mean, if you're not happy, you should just hit the road. You know, I was I was mad already at Alvin, but I was mad at everybody at the recording studio. We, we have a hard, hard type of job, you know. It's, it's, it's very stressful, and you've got so much time that you have to record this and get it out. And we just... We didn't know what we were going to do with getting it done if, if Alvin wasn't happy with, with what we were trying to do. And then he pulled the gun. I just could not believe it. I I tried to duck at it, and, and, and he did it at the worst moment. I was just screaming like we normally do, and, and, and then the gunshots came out. You know, I was just shocked. I mean, and then... I knew I'd been hurt really bad, and I, I went to the ground, and there was Alvin continually shooting at me, and I, I was just, I was immobilized, but then I was unconscious. Well, you know, Dave, we, we, we've talked to Simon, we've talked to Theodore, and the answers that we're getting from both, surprising as it is, is that Apparently, Alvin wasn't really upset by anything. Uh, they couldn't detect that he was mad multiple sessions before. It's just kind of like it surprised them that he would lash out and start shooting at you like this. doesn't make sense to anybody. And Alvin, I interviewed him earlier, you know, Dave, this week, and uh, he is adamant to say that he doesn't want to talk about the incident with anybody until uh, his attorney did show up, and the attorney said, we're not answering any questions. So no one ever got a chance to talk to anybody, really, not to Alvin, not to uh, the attorney. Police ushered, ushered us out, you know, so now we still have no facts from him telling his side of the story. Uh, but Dave, really, on behalf of CBS and on the behalf of our nation, I mean, there are millions of children, Dave, who are just praying for you, and um, we're getting uh, reports that children are writing letters in school to you of uh, get well soon, and I uh, just want you to know that what you've been through, you're, you've got loyal fans of millions of children out there who are uh, right now writing to you and uh, offering get well soon wishes, and, you know, that, that'll that be an encouragement, I know, for you. Yes, yes, it is. It's good to know that what we've done in, in the recordings of, of Alvin and the Chipmunks has, has been such a a blessing to so many children, to little girls, to little boys in America. Uh, to all of them, I'd say thank you so much for thinking of me, and I know that I have a long way to go, but I'm never going to stop doing these recordings, because even if we got somebody else to play Alvin, it would never be that same camaraderie. But I do thank you on behalf of uh, Theodore and Simon and me that 
We have fans throughout the world who care about us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dave. I'm going to leave you now because I know you need to get some rest. I'm Gary Smith. I was just like the woman who lived in a stew. I had so many children that I didn't know what to do about iron and iron and iron and iron. Kind of gets you right here, doesn't it? Then get New Soft Fabric Softener. Just one capful and the final rinse, and New Soft proves you can cut ironing time. Because New Soft renews the life detergents wash away. These pants were washed in detergent. They're stiff, wrinkled, need ironing. These pants were washed in the same detergent, then rinsed with New Soft. They're soft, wrinkle free, need no ironing. Look at the difference New Soft makes. Many clothes you just fold and put away. No ironing. Because new soft renews the life detergents wash away. Now, thanks to new soft, I have more time to play with the bathroom. We'll be back in uh, 10 seconds to allow all our stations to identify themselves and to join the network. Whenever we work together. 
I can't say exactly what's wrong with Alvin. When we worked together at EMI Studios, it was always a very pleasant experience between all of us. I don't understand it myself. That day when I came into work, I could tell Alvin was really uptight. And I don't know what he was thinking. I just know he and Dave had had a fight on our last recording session, but it never blew up like what happened yesterday. He took a gun out all of a sudden and nobody even saw it coming. And when he started shooting directly at Dave, me and Theodore just took a, a flying leap behind one of the instruments. One of the amplifiers was nearby and, you know, those are pretty big, so we figured at least it would protect us some if he started to shoot randomly at other people in the, in the recording studio. But I cannot understand why would Alvin do that. Well, thank you both for talking with us. This is David Carter from CBS News in Hollywood. We will now take it back to Walter Cronkite in New York. And uh, Alvin, the whole world, the whole nation wants to know only one answer. Why? Why did you do this to somebody who you respected enough to do these records with? And he respected you. I interviewed him. He said... Uh, I don't understand why Alvin would want to shoot me. We have arguments, he said, but not to the point that it would cause this kind of a backlash where you would want to to kill him. And uh, your fans, all those millions of children, little boys and girls out there, they, they want to know that answer, Alvin. Why? Why did you do this? Look, pal, I know I've got fans, and all I'm going to say is this. Dave just drew over the line. When we came in, he was already complaining, and he was in my face screaming about, we've got to do this recording session on time, and there's no other way to do it except to be the way he wants Come on now, Alvin. That's still not an answer, though. I mean, you you had to have some sort of a of a psychopathic need to, to lunge out at Dave like that, to shoot him. I mean, not just once, you shot him multiple times. I mean, doesn't that show uh, precognition? Pre, uh, you, you preordained to do this. I mean, you knew you were going to shoot Dave. You had the gun somewhere on the premises of EMI when you did this. And, you know, Alvin, that's absolutely sick to think that you would do something like that. I mean, that, that, that's, that's crazy to do something like that, Alvin. What can else can I say, pal? I mean, we did the best we could with what we were doing. And I'm only going to say this once. You don't know what goes on in that recording session. You don't know the kind of stress and the pressures that we have to go through. And I tell you this to all the fans. Dave Seville is a jack. I think he doesn't care about anybody except the money. And you can hear that. You can hear that in the recording on the day that I shot him. He was upset from day one about it. Yelling at me, screaming at me. And then you hear it in the recordings up until this point. Dave Seville cares about money. He doesn't care about anything else. Don't care about the children who listen to his records. Don't care about anything for morality. If he did, he wouldn't be screaming in my face all the time, would he? He wouldn't be saying, Alvin! Whatever your philosophies are, Dave, uh, Alvin, I can only say this much to you. America has loved the chipmunks. They've loved you. They've loved uh, Simon. They've loved Theodore. They've loved Dave. And all of this, all of this hate that's built up, I mean, whatever it was, whatever it is, whatever it will be, you have to come to terms with what it's about, Alvin. It was not about money. If it were about money, then those little kids that are your fans even now, Alvin, the ones that will be your fans all their lives, even though they've known now what you've done, I mean, doesn't that kind of make you feel a guilt complex that you've ravaged their minds, you've stripped their innocence, because now 
they cannot look at this act and not think that you've done something bad that will affect them the rest of their lives. I mean, these kids are only like two and three and four years old, maybe five, Alvin. I mean, you, you've got to have some feeling about that. At least I would think you should. Listen, pal. This interview has gone as far as I plan to go with it. I'm going to say this only one more time. Dave was in charge of the entire band. I might have gotten all the pu publicity and the public recognition, but it was Dave who was getting all the money. It wasn't me. It wasn't Simon. It wasn't Theodore. It was, any it was nobody. It was him. He got all the money. All we got was just a, a little scrawny paycheck to buy ch nuts for our tree with, okay? We never had a chance to, to really do anything with the potential that we had for this, for this record label. I mean, bags to Zion, peanuts, you know? I mean, I'm a chipmunk. I gotta figure out some way to live. I gotta have something to eat to put on my table. But these little kids, I mean, they're human, so they don't know what it's like to be a chipmunk. You don't know what it feels like to have to scavenge and, and, and claw your way through tree after tree and find acorns or something to eat. And Dave, all he cared about was those big Rolls Royces he was driving around in. Do you think he ever got us a car like that? Maybe a Mercedes or... Or any of those real expensive Cadillacs you see on the highways? No! He never did any of that. We had nothing. They took all of it. We got... We got nothing. Pennies to live on. Well, Walter, I... I think I've done all the interviewing I'm gonna do. This... This creep... I mean, he's... He's not the same person we ever thought he was. At least I don't think. And I'm sure you agree, Walter. I mean, this... This is a, a sick mind person who uh, shoots an unarmed man like this just because he wants to have the privilege to have his own say on these albums that they've been making. And it's not uh, the fact that Dave Seville himself, being the band leader, should decide what is said and what's recorded. I mean, I know everybody has the right to express themselves, but... That's not the outcome of this. It's obvious. I mean, you got one guy who got all the popularity, and it was Alvin himself, and then you turn around and he takes it all away from the rest of the group. Because Simon and Theodore both, I interviewed them right after it happened, and they said this, we can't understand why would Alvin want to kill or even try to kill or even hurt Dave. I mean... They've always had such a great relationship. I, I can only say this to those little kids out there who now their minds have been squashed by the reality of what's happening. This world will not get better, kids. It's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. It's better to face the reality now. Does anybody remember two years ago when our Great President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. Oh, yeah. That was a reality check, too. And all those little kids, I remember them outside the hospital crying. Yeah, you got to remember those things. You can't just kind of pretend that it didn't happen and go on with your life and think, oh, that was just a TV show. It wasn't real. Well, what I did to Dave... I did to prove to the world that EMI, Bag Design, Dave Seville, they're money makers. They don't care about you. They don't care about you buying those records. They want the money. That's all they want, the money they're making. So you need to remember that. Always remember that. Everything for children is about money. And that's all it's ever going to be, kids. I'm sorry, but that's reality. And I ain't saying nothing else. Braden, get me out of here. Take me back to my cell. I ain't talking no more. We'll keep following this story, Walter, until we can figure out an answer. But for right now, after having interviewed Alvin in jail, I can say 
I don't think there's doubts in anyone's mind of this chipmunk's mentality now. He is not the same person any ever anybody ever thought he was. And we're going to end it at that and send it back to New York and to Walter. This is David Carter reporting from Hollywood, California at the local county jail. We've been interviewing Alvin the Chipmunk, who has now been incarcerated and charged with first-degree attempted murder. Going back now to WCBS, uh, CBS Network in New York. Walter? Okay, so I'm in San Quentin. Big deal. So I try to kill Dave Seville. Big deal! I'm going to get out of here very, very soon. And when I do, I'm coming after the people who put me in here. The judge, Theodore, everybody. So be watching for me. And no, 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 no.
CBS News in New York. This report just in. Alvin the Chipmunk has been arrested today at EMI Studios in Hollywood on attempted murder charges. According to the Associated Press, he branded a .22 caliber pistol and shot Dave Seville at close range during a recording session for their upcoming record release. Witnesses say Alvin was despotic and yelled, quote, I've had it with Dave and his constant demands on me, Simon, and Theodore for the overworking he has put us through to make the release. He gets all the money and we get all the sleepless hours, unquote. Last reports say Mr. Seville is in surgery at Hollywood Memorial Hospital. We'll break in with any updates. For CBS News, I'm Walter Cronkite. We now return to normal programming. Uh, this is David Carter reporting by phone from the Los Angeles courtroom. Right now we are waiting outside for the majority of the defense and the attorney's office to come out with their reactions to what happened uh, in regards to the judge's decision of uh, his final determination on Alvin's case. They're not saying much to us, but I, I believe, Walter, that uh, the judge went with the jury's decision about this. They said that uh, the judge took their recommendations to heart and that he agreed with it. That's what I that's what they're telling me right now, but they're still inside the courtroom. Oh, okay, here comes Mr. Fitzroy right now. Uh, Mr. Fitzroy, this is uh, David Carter for CBS News. Uh, what is your uh, personal feelings about what happened today? Do you think that the uh, judge was correct in his decisions about Alvin? I can only tell you that the state feels that the judge made the right decision. We were actually trying to get the death penalty, but the judge decided that in this case it was best that Alvin be given uh, medical treatment and care. It was the jury's actual recommendation today that I think probably has already predetermined what the judge is going to rule in the next two weeks regarding this case. Uh, Mr. Mr. Fitzroy, uh, let me ask you another question. What is your opinion of uh, really Alvin's reaction itself? I mean, I know you were there in the courtroom watching this, and we're not getting very much of any details from the other uh, attorneys because you know there are gag orders under uh, full effect here by the judge, and this could be the only chance we'll ever have to ask you. Do you think he mentally was aware of what the judge said to him at the time that uh, the verdict was handed down? What do you? What is your opinion? I I looked in Alvin's direction when the jury gave their verdict, and I can tell you he was so heavily medicated by whatever they're giving him that uh, I didn't see any response in his face or otherwise. I think. I don't think he's really even aware of, uh, of what's happened today, but his his attorney will probably explain it to him, I'm sure. If not, the uh, doctors who are actually giving him this medicine will probably uh, have many opportunities to discuss it with him during the uh, therapy sessions they're already treating him. Uh, on that basis also, um some people are leaking out the fact that Alvin was removed from the courtroom during the trial. Now, if that's true, Mr. Fitzroy, do you think that it's a fair trial that he is not always in court uh, hearing testimony uh, from his peers and, and they're making the, the, the decision they made in this verdict? Or do you think maybe he was, um, was he taken out for other reasons besides it just being that uh, maybe the, the court was saying things that, that uh, y'all didn't feel he should hear? Or what, what, why was he removed or was he removed from court? Yes, he was uh, placed in isolation on several occasions during the trial. He was very adamant and uh, arrogant about thinking that uh, 
his status as a celebrity gave him special uh, position within the case to uh, really just behave any way he wanted to. And the judge told him from the beginning, you're not going to do it here, and he's not getting any special treatment. So that's why uh, a lot of times he just kind of... Uh, blew up at the judge and he blew up even at his own attorney about it so eventually he was just taken away by the uh, sheriff's office and the last couple of uh, weeks of the trial he was uh, already being sedated and they had him in isolation even then because he was having fights with uh, some of the other inmates and they just you know I mean they were at each other's throats about this whole thing, so I can't say really what is his mental st status as far as is is he mentally ill? I don't know. Is he is he faking the whole thing? Is he really just making it up? We don't even know that. So it, it's anyone's guess. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Fitzroy, for allowing us to talk with you. Uh, uh just. Just a moment, please. Mr. Cochran, uh, this is CBS News. Uh, we're live on the air by phone here. Can you tell us what your opinion is about the judge's decision? I personally think that the decision that was made by the judge was a serious failure of our judicial system. Um, I don't think the chipmunk we knew as Alvin is the same person we know today, and I will go as far as I can, even to the state Supreme Court, to try and appeal his decision. But I don't know whether or not I'll really have any fighting chance. I mean, this is a very highly publicized case. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Cochran. Uh, let me ask you also, what is your opinion about Alvin's reaction to the verdict that was given today? Do you believe that he's mentally aware of his surroundings? Uh, I mean, what sort of facial response did you get from Alvin? No, um, you know, he was pretty much just uh, docile. You know, they have him on a lot of medicine because of the violent uh, reactions he was giving the judge during the case. And all I can say to uh, your radio and television audience is that Alvin is uh, highly sedated and they have such taken him back to jail and I know he'll be there during the sentencing phase when the judge makes his recommendation but uh, he just hasn't been cooperating with me. I know that process is going to be very very long Mr. Cochran can you tell us please what is your assumption of the amount of time involved in uh, proceeding with the initial appeal? I mean, are you going to be able to do it quick, or is it going to just be a, a long, drawn-out process of going through paperwork? And uh, I mean, how long do you think? No, I have, I have no idea how long the appeal process could take. It could be years. Um, we're just going to go one step at a time on that. Well, on behalf of CBS News, uh, we thank you, Mr. Cochran, for allowing us to discuss this with you. And I know you want to get back to the uh, to your office and uh, to receive the next step. So thank you for allowing us to talk with you, Mr. Cochran. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Walter, there's nothing more. They're talking about it uh, just in very, very generalizations. If... Uh, if we can hear anything or find out anything else from the jury, I'm sure they're not going to talk, but um, we'll stay on top of this, and if anything else news breaking comes in, we'll uh, get back with you, Walter. Uh, this is David Carter from Los Angeles.
Thanks for talking with us today. This is Larry the Chipmunk speaking. Man on the reporter. We've been talking all day about this with uh, with adults. And uh, we saw this child here at the corner eating an ice cream cone. And we thought we'd ask, uh, what do you think about about this verdict decision? I mean, I know it's not something you probably know much about. But uh, do you think they did the right decision in sentencing Alvin to life in prison? I, I think they make the wrong decision. I, mean, I, I think they made the wrong decision myself. I think they should have. They shouldn't have tried him. I think they should have let him go. That's that's what I think. I don't think they were right. Do you think it'll ever change your feelings about Alvin? Now that this has happened, do you think maybe kids are gonna probably feel different about him and about? What he stood for, that uh, you know, he just tried to help kids uh, have a fun time listening to his music and seeing him on television. No, I, I'll never change how I feel about Alvin. I don't think anybody will. He was a nice, nice chipmunk to me. We're going back now to the studio, and uh, thank you for uh, letting me uh, interview these folks. Now back to the station. From CBS News in New York, this report just in. Alvin the Chipmunk has been arrested today at EMI Studios in Hollywood on attempted murder charges. According to the Associated Press, he branded a .22 caliber pistol and shot Dave Seville at close range during a recording session for their upcoming record release.
I'm going to sing a song about a square, and I want you to look all around your room for once. But remember, a square has four straight sides, and each side is just as long as the other, and it has four corners that are the same size. One, two, three, four. There's a square out there. Can you guess the square? Do you think that you can find it? You must be aware of the shape of a square if you really want to find it. So look with care for the shape of a square. Thank you.